dollars of worth of that derivative, okay? That got a lot of publicity in 2008, but the rules haven't been changed. And that, is, in, in fact, is what this London-based fund is trying to do. Can this help the country that is being targeted for positive? Yeah, absolutely. It absolutely can. I mean, I'm not saying this is a good economic system for the world, and I'm not saying something may not happen, you know, down the road where you're going to get really dire consequences out of this. Um, to me, it's probably a little bit of more concern, given the other possibilities that this is a world that is, in, in America, moving into real political power. It's not, you know, a military coup like you get in Latin America, but when you have essentially a tiny oligarchy, there's only 5,000 hedge fund managers in the United States running, so about 10 for each member of Congress who are also getting most of their campaign money from the same people. So you have this tiny group of people, um, and I think the, the, although I think certainly having an African American candidate who is able to raise so much money that he can plausibly run for office, something that when I was growing up, just like China was the, you know, place where everyone was starving, the idea that a black person could become president was something, you know, nobody thought would ever happen. So you do have these positive things that can come from it, but it's a very dangerous situation. And in the meantime, however, I, I think in terms of Greece, once again, um, in terms of concrete steps, like the listing possibly of funds on the Athens Stock Exchange, which Ireland has just a total how-to primer of how to do it, it's a business that costs nothing. I mean, many people run hedge funds out of their home offices, okay? The three funds that brought down the subprime mortgage market in the United States in 2008, which is very well described in a best-selling book called The Big Short by Michael Lewis, one of them was being run out of a garage. The other one started with a guy who was an emergency room doctor in Nashville, Tennessee, who was good at stock trading and was basically running a website when he was on call in an emergency room in a hospital. I mean, it's a world where it's all mental. Um, in uh, Dublin, I believe it costs three thousand dollars for an American three thousand euros for an American fund to list on the Dublin Stock Exchange. If Athens started doing it, and Athens offered a listing price of 2,000 euros, they would get funds, okay? And that's, again, I'm only addressing this one very specific issue. There are many other ways. I do believe that Greece is starting to attract the attention, as I said, um, on the example of the fund that's been started in London. Um, politics in Greece may make this a very difficult issue to, to bring to the public, I mean, in terms of, you know, let's say, um, perceptions of what the actual problems are. And I'm not suggesting that Greece's problems come because they don't have a hedge fund industry. I'm just really trying to suggest that that's a possibility that, that, that should be looked at. Many countries in the Caribbean, I mentioned Bermuda, but there's also Grand Cayman Island, um, which is a very poor, you know, impoverished, uh, I think they actually may still be under British um, Empire rule, that has become a tremendous financial center because of passing legislation that was welcoming. Okay. And in the event that something goes really wrong with the euro, and Greece no longer has to follow the restrictions that the EU places, and by the way, the EU has a lot of rules, a lot of regulations, and there are some issues with the hedge fund industry, but when you really look at the details, you find that they are conspicuously more tolerant of things that hedge funds say and do than they are for the mainstream banking system, which are all names. Everybody knows the name of the big banks. I'm not sure that anyone in, in this room could name, you know, well, I know Rosemary can because she has a friend who runs a, a, a fund in London, but really these names are totally unknown. Nobody knows who these funds are, and yet they're much bigger than the banks. In some cases, they own these banks. So um, I know I'm running short on my time. I just want to, you know, conclude with this thought that, you know, um, it's something that you can learn probably as much as I've said tonight. You can learn in 45 minutes on the internet, because if you Google shadow banking system, it all comes up basically, you know, even more detail on what I'm saying. And I don't think you have to be um, necessarily, um, you know, um, a Nobel Prize winning economist to see that with this amount of money floating around, and with a country like Greece that's short on salary, uh, money to, to pay people, and, and with a world that's looking basically to bet on the direction things are going on, that there could be a much more serious effort to reach out to this system and, you know, hopefully bring at least some progress. Um, I don't think the Greek situation is hopeless at all. I think there are dangers 
to put it mildly, in a shadow banking system like the world has. But I think the risk reward for an economy that is depressed, as unemployed, and as challenged as Greece is all, all on the side of getting involved with it. Okay, so um, I'm going to stop here and thank you for your attention and um, any questions. Uh,